Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hopefully you've been here before, but if not, hit that subscribe button down below and uh, hit the bell and check all to make sure you get future videos. Also hit that like button. A couple days ago, I talked to a, a guy, his name is uh, Derek, uh, Kilo 6 Delta Juliet Victor. He, uh, you might know him, He's a two, he's, uh, his channel is the Two Meter Crew. You might know him as the Green Donkey. He is. Uh, he calls us Forerunner the Green Donkey. We were chatting on uh, Simplex 146 520. Uh, there's a group of guys in the area here that get on there occasionally, a lot of times. And um, I was I was telling him about a rotor I have for for going out portable. It's a 12 volt motor. It'll turn your Yagi antennas uh, from remote location. And if you've watched his videos, he goes to the back of his green donkey and he's he turns the volume up real loud and he's turning his antenna, trying to get people in. He's really he's really into uh, simplex. Does that sideband also? So a friend of mine back in uh, Vermont, his name's Steve K1MM. Uh, his channel is the Green Mountain Maniac. He uh, built this. He built one of these. Oh, probably two years ago, and I like the build, and I I do similar stuff as him, so I, I I built my own. It's a little bit different than his, not not exactly the same, and uh, so today I'm going to show you the steps to go through to make this, the parts you need. The hardest part is that motor. It's uh, I'll explain it in the video, but uh, stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy this. All right, this is a basically a 12 volt rotor I made for portable work uh, with my two meter and my six meter antennas. I've got a two meter Yagi and a six meter hex beam that I take out. The motor, it's just a, it's a two RPM motor, sits in this area right here. I'll take this apart, part of it apart in a little bit. Um, down here, this is one inch pipe right in here. This fits into a tripod that I have. It's a, um, it's made by Pile. And it's a speaker tripod for uh, guys that do, you know, like uh, weddings and stuff like that. And they hang their speakers on it. So this is a inch and a half coupler along with this is an inch and a half coupler. At the ends here, they have an inch and a half to one inch reducer on both ends. And on this one, this one rides, basically this piece here goes up to the, uh, to where the antenna is. And this reducer actually works as like a, a bearing or something, kind of like a bearing in a way and uh, it's a fairly tight fit but it, it'll turn let me then i'll actually turn it for you here you can watch that bolt and watch the bolt there so it'll turn one way i can turn it back the other way all right. This bolt here is for the pipe that comes down over the top of this, and you put a bolt through it so it uh, it doesn't spin on top. So that will, and the antenna actually has a a uh, bolt through it so it won't spin at the top section. Also, now this will come out. off here there's the motor it's 
really hard to see, but it has a, uh, if you look at the motor, it's got a flat edge. I can't tell on the camera here, but it's got a flat edge. And then I'll show you inside the other half that I have a, um, like a little set screw that hits that flat edge so it won't spin on the shaft. This is the inside of this. It's like a coupler. It's uh, threaded on one end, and then that sh that part there, the, the, the closest to the camera, slides over the shaft, and then there's that sc set screw right there. This is the hardest part to make. You have to somehow attach to the PVC. There's I I, I welded a little bolt inside. I think it's a I want to say it's a quarter twenty. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember. I made this quite a while ago and it's hard to see down in there, but down inside there, that's, that attaches. And then I have a bolt going through that to hold that. The hardest part's just trying to get it to where it, it, it rotates pretty straight. Not, not super difficult. So when this goes back in here, you just have to line it up. That's basically the whole parts. I'll show you a picture. I've got a, uh, a motor. I'll grab that in a second here. Um, the first one I did, these screws here, really, they're holding this bottom section together to this piece of pipe here. But um, originally I had them to where they were like a set screw for the motor. But I found you don't need that. And I found on my first one, I tightened them too tight and I squished the armature area. And the motor quit working. So. What I've done now is just, I tape the motor itself with electrical tape, just so it's nice and tight, and then force it inside the pipe so, it's, so it doesn't turn. So I said this is a 12 volt system, the motor, but I actually run it on a 9 volt battery. And um, what I have here is a momentary switch. It just it pops back. And so if you can see this contact and this contact are joined and then that this wire goes down to the motor. This contact and this contact are joined and the other wire goes to the motor. Then your positive and your negative to the little battery here. They go to the two middle posts. That should be pretty universal for most of these switches like this. So this is a momentary switch both directions. Okay. All right. Let me get the other motor that I ruined. And I'll show you what it actually looks like. I bought this, and actually I bought this motor off of Amazon for this video. I tried to find it. Right now it's currently unavailable. I can find a, um, I can find one that's for 5 RPMs, revolutions per minute, but not for 2. And the 5 might work. It might be a little bit fast though. And then and the nine volt battery kind of helps that, but you may be able to set some kind of a something that regulates the speed too. I, I didn't go that fancy. Okay, let me let me get that other motor. Okay, this is one of the motors right here. As you can see, I taped this section here, and I think on the other one this is actually taped also. And you can see right here where it's dimpled. That's where I ruined it. So don't, you you don't really need to do that. I, after I got the new motor, all I did was tape it so this. This diameter outside is really close to the diameter on the inside of the the pipe it's in, which is the oh, what was that one? That's the um, the inch and a half, I think. 
So pretty simple. I don't know if you can see it, but right here, it's got a flat edge, and that's where that set screw sits. I really messed this up. These uh, these little motors are about anywhere from twelve to fifteen dollars from Amazon, and they're a geared motor. Basically, you're looking for a geared um, two RPM motor. Let me see if I can actually. There's the actual one that I bought. If you look that up on Amazon, it'll come up, but it'll say, right that, well, when I recorded this, that it's not available right now. And they don't know when, of course. Uh, antenna mounted. This is a, it's hard to see, but I'll, I'll give a, a, a future video on the antenna. It's a six meter Moxon. But uh, there's the motor, then down to the stand. Now the stand is a pile, P-Y-L-E, speaker stand works really good and right here you, you you loosen this and this thing it goes up about four more feet it's like I think it's an eight foot stand is what they call it plus the two or three feet I have above it a lot of times if you're up on a hill that's all you need uh, you don't really need to get much higher and it works really good I've, I've noticed that it works really really good if you can get off a, a bank I was up at the drag races one time and uh, we had like a 30 foot drop off below us and I think the antenna actually kind of thought it was tall higher than it was and I did really good getting into a net down in Fresno which is about 200 miles from me on, that was on 2 meter so let me just show you sorry for the camera there so I've got the button so all we do is go let me get over this way a little bit one direction and it turns and then if you want to go the other direction, just hit the button the other way. The only thing you really need to watch out for is your coax. You don't want to just keep wrap, wrapping your coax around the, the pole. So you want to do, you know, 360 and then back 360. All right, I hope this is uh, clear enough for everybody. Well, hopefully you got something out of the video today. And I hope you can, uh, and I hope you make one and uh, try it out for yourself if you're into this kind of... Uh, ham radio work. It works really good. I wouldn't put it on a huge uh, antenna, anything really heavy, but your lighter, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, stuff like that, even some 6 meter. I've, I've got a 6 meter hex beam. I, you probably you saw it, you see it in the, the video, so, and it works pretty well. So, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and uh, I really appreciate you joining me today. It's a, it's great. I, I hope something. My hope the content is helping people. Uh, my my channel is basically a how-to channel. I, I I like to make my own stuff, and uh, hopefully you do too. I think every ham should be able to make, you know, simple antennas and stuff like that, so that they. Uh, if something does happen, even with a store-bought antenna, you know how to fix it. So my name's Chuck. Call sign KK6USY Ham Radio Adventures. Thanks for joining me. See you later.